Welcome to the Queen City Soccer Show. We are here in bright and sunny yeah. Clemson, South Carolina. Cole, can you tell us a little bit about the venue? Yeah, so we're at Kite Hill Brewing Company um, right here. I actually live two minutes up the street. Um, it's a great little place in Clemson. Restaurants, wine bars, obviously Kite Hill Brewing. You got um, Sunnyside Cafe. It's phenomenal breakfast. Some of the best breakfasts I've ever had. Uh, it's next door to Joe's New York Pizza in Clemson, which is great pizza. Uh, we're, I mean, yeah, we're. He's down here. Obviously, he's wearing the Syracuse orange. He's down here for the Clemson Syracuse basketball game, and we Let's thought go. it would be a good good time since I live in Clemson to go ahead and uh, get together and do a do a show, do our do our recap of Saturday where Charlotte drew one one with Vancouver. Um, and yeah, the vibes are immaculate. It's not very. <laughs> It's it's a little rainy, but it's not it's not too bad out here. And uh, but yeah, so Charlotte, you know, draw one one, and come away with a point, which is hard to it's hard to complain about when you're traveling four thousand miles across the continent. Um, got a new signing. New signing. We got a press conference to go over. Yes. We have yes. Uh, Independence Fan Fest to talk about. Yep. We have a USL and USL one press conference we can tell you guys about. Little exclusive reporting. Yep. And uh, that happened today, right? That was today. Yep. Yep. And uh, I, I was told there will be listener questions. So yeah. yep. Yep. we'll see how that goes. So and yeah, so we're excited. We're here. Um, again, Charlotte come away with a point. It's uh, the twenty first minute. We'll, we'll same lineup as the, the home opener. Um, nothing changed. Um, and yeah, it was we, you know, we controlled the first thirty minutes really of this game. Uh, the twenty first minute. Enzo Capetti gets uh, <laughs> Enzo Capetti gets gets taken down in the box and it's called a penalty on the field. Ends up going to VAR for what seemed like 30 minutes and then gets overturned, um, which you know it was called a penalty on the field. Therefore, it should have stayed a penalty. But yep, it is what it is. Um, I, I think if Enzo controls that ball a little bit better, we're we're talking about him, you know, taking the penalty. What do you think? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a recurring theme, right? Um, you know, we have replacement refs, we have replacement rules. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, the ball gets played into the box. There's a defender who, who gets uh, maybe a slight touch on it. The ball ricochets a few yards out. And so it doesn't maintain possession, but he does take the contact from the defender. It's whistled for the foul in the box. That's a penalty. They go to VAR, and these replacement refs are using the VAR allegedly, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> as, as a crutch maybe to correct their calls on the field. <laughs> Instead of overturning them based on uh, clear and obvious evidence, of which there was none, uh, you saw later in the game there was another clear and obvious call that was not adhered to. Um, it's frustrating, but, you know, yeah. it's hard to be too critical after the overall performance. Enzo had one shot on goal in the yep. game. Um, still struggling at the, at the 9. Uh, the 10, we're not getting a, a whole lot of creativity. Yep. We're getting a few flashes. But I think the big story of the day is Yuri uh, Tavares. Yeah, right? I would agree. Um, and then, like I said, I think Charlotte dominated the match the first 30 minutes, and in the 31st minute, Brecht, uh, which we will we will touch on, but Brecht puts the ball into the box. Enzo does a phenomenal dummy uh, through him and the defender's legs, and Yuri Tavares slots at home. Uh, just a, a great finish. You, no complaints about that. Um, and you go up one nil, and their home opener. I mean, uh, yeah. what more can you want? You know. Um, but what did you see from the goal line? What was your what was your thoughts on it? I just, you know, we talked about it before, but the way that he's positioning his body, boxing out the defender, and then the silky smooth finish, keeping his head down, following through, hitting yep. the ball top in, it, it's textbook to me. Uh, boxing not, that defender out was just it was beautiful. It was a, a thing of beauty. When I watched it live, I was like, it, it just, my instinct was, there's a lot going right. Yeah. And then when I saw the replay, I started dissecting it, and I'm like, a guy that size with yeah. that, that kind of a body frame yeah. to keep the, the presence of mind. And um, it's it's more impressive because it's not within his line of sight. Yeah. It's off body, and he's he's sensing where yeah. the defender is yeah. and positioning himself in just the right spot where he's going to be the one who is, is able to make the play. Right. The defender does not have a shot. Yeah. Andrew Privet in that position wouldn't have Nobody a shot. Would. Nobody, Nobody. Would. Virgil van Dijk wouldn't have a shot. Uh, I mean, but so you go up 1-0. You know, you're thinking everything's all gravy, everything's, you know, we're up one mil, it's Dino time, everything's, you know, coming up millhouse for the crown. Um, and, yeah, and then 
we have five minutes. Five minutes of added time due My to due, due to the obviously the VAR stoppage, and then also Ashley Westwood getting a yellow card in the first right. half, which was petty. In my, uh, it, uh, should, it, it shouldn't have been a yellow. Um, right. It, right. Again, these captains, they're captains of the team for a reason. They're there to be that spokesperson for the team to the ref, and I, this is his second yellow in two games, and I know there's some confusion there was on spaces as far as whether, will he be suspended, will he not be suspended, but he won't be suspended. No, no. Unless yellow card accumulation goes in groups of five, I believe. So once a player does hit five yellow cards, they're going to face a one-game suspension. When they hit ten yellow cards, I believe it's a two-game suspension. Uh, so on and so forth. We saw that last year with the accumulation on Enzo Capetti and Derek Jones. Yep. So uh, for a tournament, though, for the League's Cup, you will have that next game suspension. Yep. The second yellow in two games will count. Second yellow actually throughout the group stage, and I'm not sure if the reset point is at the beginning of the playoffs or if it is it, uh, at the so second it, stage. It, it's usually at the beginning of the playoffs. It usually is. I think yeah. League's Cup was different last year, yes. so we'll go ahead and confirm that. I think the rules for these tournaments may be changing yeah. slightly. They yeah. may tweak them. Um, but, yeah, so he gets to the yellow card, and then so there's five minutes added on at the end of the first half. Right. And then just some soccer shit happens. Um, Raposo for Vancouver, he's trying to just head the ball back across goal. Right. It comes off the side of the head, not flush, and Enzo's – I mean Enzo. Kalina's already leaning to try to stop whatever shot may be coming from the cross, and it just – he, it just dribbles into the goal. I mean, the yeah. slow motion. And then Raposo, like a jackass, goes in, celebrates like he just scored a, you know, James Rodriguez 2014 World Cup goal. Shine the shoes. Yeah. Shine the shoes. What, what is going on with that? I Why? mean, <laughs> you, you scored an accidental goal going yeah. two kilometers an hour. It, it's not a flex, man. It, yeah. It's not impressive. Not at all. Uh, I, I understand you're a defender, but, like, have a little bit of poise. Uh, speaking of defenders, though, I, I will say – to me, our back line is looking the, solid. So, the foot mob ratings for the back line was 7.1 from uh, all the way across for Nathan Byrne, for Melanda, and for Privet. Uh, yeah. The but you're your own, and he gets to seven. I think it was I believe it was a 7.5 on the foot mob scale. And your your own, he had a he had a phenomenal game. Yeah. Um, the back line looked good once again. And look, man. You have a clean sheet last time out. You have a clean sheet all through the preseason, and then you just give up. You give up this type of goal again. It's going to happen. It is what it is. That's nothing. The backline did. Yeah. The backline was in their positions. It's just fluke things happen, and that's what happened. And it was right before half, which was a, kind of a gut punch because Charlotte dominated that first half, and, and, and it really changed the complexion going into the second half. Yeah. Uh, the second half, Charlotte did not look as as dominant. Uh, but they held on, and I mean, I, I will say as far as you're he did have a shot on goal. He did. And I'm going to need did. my man with the with the pink cleats. I'm going to need him to start taking right. some shots in practice because yeah, that was, that was he, he's got to get some power behind that shot. Like, I know you're a defender, but come on, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, but. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, and, you know, it's, again, we come out in the second half, and it, it's almost like the air was taken out of us. Um, Vancouver really controlled the possession in that second half. Um, I think the final statistics at the end was 51% to 49%, and then you have uh, in Charlotte's favor. Right. Um, but well, I, it was pretty even. And yeah. most, most of the stats, the shots, the shots on target, um, opportunities, a lot of that was pretty close to being down the middle. Yeah. But I think where we really dominated was, like I said, that back line with yep. Melanda and Privet. Dude, Privet has that little swim move, that little yep. gets the arm over and does like the toe poke, the and aggressive. Think, yeah, dude. And I think I think the midfield beast. background helps Privet in yeah. this. Um, obviously, Bill's on the bench for this game. and Coming off Nick, an injury, he's still recovering. Yeah, and so, you know, and it's going to be interesting to see what exactly comes from Bill when he's healthy. You know, who, if, if, it's Andrew's spot to lose. Yeah, and yeah. and I think that he's done nothing to be pulled out. Even this is two this is two coaches. I know we have a lot to say about Latanzio, but yeah. but at the same time, this is two coaches who see the talent and see you know what he's working with and the partnership that he does have with Milanda is working well. So yeah, um, and we've seen Bronico coming back in practice, warming right, up, right. and ben, you know, ben as well off to the side. It, it's one of those things where Bronico won his spot with two different coaches, mm -hmm. and this is coach number three. Uh, where does he slot in in this midfield? Yeah, I'm not and sure. Specifically with you know the emergence of Junior Urso, 
Um, obviously, we still haven't seen Diani. Um, Diani is still working on his visa. Yeah. And so it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see how Dean Smith plays this, um, specifically when Brant comes back, when Diani does get his visa approved, when. Even when Ben Bender comes back, this right. midfield is going to – and it's a good thing. It's, it's a good thing to have a, a talent pool as, as like we have at midfield. Um, so, yeah, I mean – But, I mean, can we talk about Junior Urso? Yeah, I dude. mean, the, my man is a dog. He is. He's, he's, the, he, after he's the bear for a reason. I'll tell you what. He's, he's the bear for a reason. I'm going to need to see a buddy cop movie. It's Junior Urso and Bram Bronico, <laughs> and they're both the bad cops. I mean, yeah. it's, it's yeah. bad cop and bad cop. Yeah. Because they are both just getting after it. They don't care about the rules. They're out there grinding every day. Yep. Yeah, and, and you know, and uh, again, man, like I say, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Dean handles this because I don't understand. I don't see how, obviously, the caveat here is we're two games in. So things can change in a hurry. Right. If, if Charlotte goes out to Toronto this weekend and – which is 2 o'clock, by the way, kickoff, not 10.30, which we had some yeah. confusion on spaces. It is 2 o'clock t- uh, kick up in Toronto. But if we go out and we get thumped 3-0, 4-0, right. there's going to be questions. It's yeah. just the way it is. And so – I don't see that happening. Man. I don't either. I don't we either. We haven't allowed three goals total since the beginning yeah, of preseason. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I, I've, you know, our I think our back line is jelly. I, I really do. I, I mean, our, our back uh, – the fullbacks look solid. Yeah, uh, yeah, Nathan yeah. Byrne is another guy who was showing me some some disgusting effort out yeah, there. Yeah, dude. And dudes. Yep. I, that was good to see from Byrne because I'll tell you, I mean, you know, I was not a Byrne fan yeah, last no, yeah, year. Yeah. But in the preseason, I saw him grinding, getting an effort on the wings, doing some overlapping play yes, that, that looked organic. It looked Jalen Lindsay-esque. And then in this game, I saw him uh, really putting in the effort and, and – Giving Vancouver fits. Yeah. I want to see that. And we know Yoronin has that in his bag of tricks playing for the Finnish national team. But for Byrne to body a guy into the ground and then the <laughs> and then camera the, showing the close-up. And he just looks over him. And he just looks at him like, <laughs> with disgust. Yeah. It was like he got posterized in basketball. Yeah. I was and like, you know, oh, man. And look, man. I get the Jalen Lindsay. I get it. He's he's a local guy. Everybody loves Jalen. Play Jalen every damn game. I, so I get that. But it, Nathan Byrne's playing so well right now, you can't take him out. Um, I think or, we, he's going to get spelled. Don't get me wrong. I think we have a lot of room yeah. for rotation throughout our roster, and we found ourselves in this trap last year where we yeah. were saying we have 20 starters on the team, and then we come out and we don't put up the points. We start off the, the campaign with three losses in a row. Yeah. We get 11 draws in a row, or whatever it was with Latanzio. We dropped 26 points from winning positions. Yeah. But we start off the season with all this optimism. Hey, we have 20 guys who could start. We we have the deepest roster in the league. Yeah. I, I mean. Were we wrong? No. We know these guys. We know what they're all about. We see the work they're putting in, and yep. we're optimistic. We want the best for them. So what I want to see is in an adverse environment like Toronto, where weather may be a factor, where uh, you're going to be – last time we played in Toronto, there the was, like was a 10, 15-mile-an-hour <laughs> crosswind. I mean, what are we going to do when our backs are against the wall? And uh, we have not trailed so far this season. Yep. Yep. So I think this team has the the guts to, to come back and put in a good performance. Um, yeah, and I mean, so we'll talk about the elephant in the room for a second. The second half, Vancouver, like I said, controlled the game. Right. Enzo does get a one on one, which, and I, I will say this yeah. in the spaces, I was very, very, very critical on Brett. Um, Brett, I, I'm concerned about our camp position. Um, but at the same time, he did put in, he did get the assist on right. the goal. Right. And then he did have a wonderful flick on to Enzo to set up that one-on-one with the keeper. And Enzo doesn't score. Yeah. Um, he, he tries to open his hips. He tries to slot it uh, cross goal. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the keeper put in a good effort. He got low. He throws out his leg, gets the kick save. Yeah. Um, the question that you asked in the spaces, and we'll repeat it again for the show here, does Big Pat score he in does. that position? He does. Easy I'm, answer. <laughs> he does. Easy and, answer. And, and look, and I'm not trying to talk down on Enzo. Enzo had a great, great first half. Yeah. Um, the, the work rate that he puts in, the lanes that he opens up for for the Bricks, for the, the, the curling bar, play, the hold-up play. The is, connection with Tavares. Exactly. Is it's, it's, you know, Enzo, we know what Enzo brings to the table. We just haven't seen it in Charlotte. We, if you can go back and watch Rossing when he was in Argentina, yeah. you know this is the style that he 
yeah. thrives in. The the long balls, which again, Kalina had a great game as far as long balls. Yeah. Rivet, um, Yaron and all the back line. Milanda was some Milanda. line breaking yeah, passes. Yeah, up the I mean, so head. I think Enzo is set up for a good season. Yeah. He just that's just look, you, man, see, you need to convert. You gotta convert. You're a DP, you're the, at this point in time, which we will get into, you're the only DP. Right. So that, you have to score that, and um, you know what we say, man. I'm going to a basketball game in a, in a few hours here, man. Shooters got to shoot, exactly. And, and yeah. my man has one shot through two games. Yeah. And so, bro, I picked you to be my player of the year. I'm gonna need you to take more shots because the more shots you take, the more you're gonna convert. Yeah, and and come on, you know. And again, it's a it's a big pat does come in for yep. Brecht. Yeah. He does have a look at goal. Is it too late? Does he come in too late? I think so. How do you feel about the timing? I think so. And I said this on Twitter during the game. Seventieth minute. Yeah, and so, I, I mean, you and I were both in in separate places, an hour and a half away from each other. Yep. I think we were both feeling it around the sixty third to sixty fifth minute, minute. Yeah, like was... right in that range. We started a chant. Well, we Danny Brams started a friend of the pod. Danny yeah, Brams yeah. started a chant of call Pat at yeah. the sixty fifth minute. And look, man, I, uh, I get it. I, here, here's the thing: is the first game of the season. Yeah. You're controlling the game. There's, right. Even with tired legs, you're controlling the game. This game, your your drawing is one to one. Right. It was calling for, for some fresh legs. Now, with the caveat or the asterisk being there, that Big Pat was coming off an injury. Yeah. So his hamstring maybe still not one hundred percent. Exactly. So he does come in. He does get some minutes, but he didn't look like the Big Pat that we know. Uh, he his movement seemed maybe a little bit off, and he, yeah. he wasn't quite dominating physically like I would expect. But I have I still haven't rewatched the game, so I, I, need, I need to I go either. back in and yeah, uh, take too. another look. Um, but you yeah, know, I, Nympho came in. We yep. had Scott Arfield come in. Yep. Uh, we had, uh, I believe, one more sub. Uh, uh, that's it. No, that three, was it. That should be it. Subs. Uh, yeah, that was it. Um, and you know, I, I again, so Charlotte does come out of this with a point. If well, you had told me before the game. I'd be happy about this. Me too. It's the way that it went down exactly. with the five minutes of added time in the first half, yep. the late subs. And let me ask you, when Birchmas comes in, mm-hmm. our, our boy Nympha, yep. 16 yeah. years and a week old, yeah. uh, I love it. But do you take out Tavarish? Because no. And this is something, look, look, man, I'm not the head coach of the team. I'm not Dean Smith. He's getting paid millions for a reason. Right, right. But at the same time, he played an 8.0 on foot mob scale. He was the player of the match for Charlotte. He was FC. dominated. He still looked good. He, he still looked good he, on the he, ball. You know, and I don't know the inner workings of what was going on. Vargas was Var- having Vargas another needs, rough game. Vargas needs to come out for, for Nympha, in my opinion. And, that, that's You keep on Tavares. You have Pat. Yeah. And not only, listen, not only because of Tavares just having a good game. The end of the game, you set pieces are so huge. And Tavares set pieces, we've already seen it in the first game. Yeah. And then you have Big Pat, yep. and then you bring on Nympha, and then you do also you have Milanda. You have I mean, you, you have these. I mean, these and Nympha's pretty tall too. Yeah, and he's, and he's a lanky boy. He's a little beanpole. So you know, it's again, it's we're we're, we're nitpicking at this point, but sure. Um, at the same it's, time, it's some what ifs, and you know, Dean after the game says it's not good enough. You know, yeah. we got to get the win, and that's nice to hear, by the way. It is. It, I mean, and it, he didn't blame it on any excuses. He didn't yeah. blame it on the supporters yeah. who traveled. Shout out to Gallimore, you know, travel out to Vancouver. He didn't blame it on on the pressure. He said we need to be better. Yeah. I, I expect better. It was not a perfect performance. We can improve. Yeah, and, and so hey, we're spitballing here. Yeah, for sure. For maybe, sure. maybe you don't take out your star player for the match. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who's having a fantastic yeah. time. Maybe you take out Vargas, who's struggling a little. Obviously, well, to me, it looks like he may be having some confidence issues. He, yeah. he needs he needs um, a little bit of reinforcement. And I wonder, and this is, I wonder if, you know, the end of the last season when Kerwin was such a great form, he was right. on that left side. Right. So I wonder if moving, he's just adjusting, getting back to that right wing versus yeah. the left wing. And so with that being said, we'll put a cap on the game. Sure. We have a new sign. But whoa, I'll tell you what, when we come back, we're going to talk about the new signing. All right, welcome back to the Queen City Soccer Show. And Cole, we have some breaking news from... What two three days ago? Yeah, it's been it's been a couple of days now. Yeah, <laughs> it's not official yet, but it's it's officially unofficial that Charlotte FC is welcoming in a new DP signing, the most expensive signing 
arguably, in the history of the club. Yeah. We'll wait to see how the yeah. financial details shake it's, out. It's, yeah, so it's in between seven and ten million dollars now in that range. Tell me, tell me where this mystery player is coming from. So he's coming from Luke's. I will say it like that. Luke's uh, Celtic Football Club over in Scotland. Hell hell. Um, and yeah, I mean Abada. Um, he's coming over right winger. Yep. Um, he's coming over from Celtic. Talented, twenty-two year old. A young, a yeah. young. He's going to take a young DP slot. Doesn't um, count as a full DP. Right. Young and, DP. And so yeah, he's coming over from Scotland. Um, and you know we're going to be obviously extremely welcoming to this guy because Oof. some of the circumstances that he's going through yeah. and why he's leaving Celtic in the first place is it has nothing to do with soccer. Right. Let's put it that way. There's a very unfortunate human reality that we have to deal with in being sports fans. Yep. Uh, that's regardless of who you support. There are going to be things from outside of sport that creep their way in and yep. impact uh, the world that we live in, the, the little bubble of entertainment and um, passion that we that we enjoy. Yep. Celtic is a club that is rooted in uh, outside of sports uh, factors. Yep. That's the how the club was formed, and that is continued throughout the history of the club. Uh, they're often considered one of the more uh, ultra-liberal, ultra-left uh, of the football clubs in the world because they support a lot of social causes. And one of the social causes that one of the supporters groups, the Green Brigade, not Celtic fans, yeah. just one of the supporter groups. Like, we have five main supporter groups in the royal family. Let's imagine one of those groups would hold up a Palestinian flag every game. That is what the Green, Green Brigade does at uh, Paradise in, in uh, Glasgow. And because of that affiliation and that visual image and the history of support for uh, the state of Palestine, um, unfortunately, Abada ran into a conflict between both feeling the deep emotional uh, impact of October 7th in Israel, his homeland, where he was born and raised, as we can imagine, if, right. if after 9-11, yeah. you know... You're playing, yeah. You're, you're playing, playing overseas. Or and, Iraq. <laughs> and, and they have an Afghanistan flag. I mean, it's... Yeah. You, you know, we can all put ourselves in his shoes. Yeah. So, all the more reason we should welcome him in. Right. Um, you know, Celtic fans, when he returned to play for Celtic after October 7th, the entire standing stadium ovation. gave him a standing ovation. Yep. Uh, the fans love him. They He, he put up a back-to-back 10-goal, -back five-assist seasons. Which you'll take. <laughs> for a winger. Yeah, which you'll take. It, for a winger, 10 goals, 5 assists. I'll yeah. take it. Is he in form? We're not sure because he did stop playing for Celtic this season due to the, the ongoing conflict. Uh, the coach said he wasn't in the right frame of mind because he was receiving uh, abusive messages on Instagram from uh, Israeli national supporters who were upset that he was playing for Celtic. Um, now, did he also receive abuse from the other side? I'm sure he did. Yeah, I'm it, sure. He's caught in the middle, yeah. and we, we can't – be putting pressure on this dude because of where he's from. No, that wouldn't be right. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I have very, very, I have a ton of faith in in the Charlotte FC family. Yeah. And I don't think that's going to be an issue here. I think that we'll be. Yeah. We're, look, getting back to the soccer side of it, we're ecstatic to have yeah. a young DP. That's we're ecstatic right. to have. Now, when he comes in... Now, we, we would tell all the players on Charlotte FC to stay off the internet, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. don't read the press, stay off the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, look, I, I think we can leave it at that. But yeah, like, and I think, again, yeah. I think it, yeah, yeah. he brings a dynamic to this team. Like you said, 15 goal con contributions. Um, he He's a very talented player. My question for you is... Sure. Who are you dropping for? So, who do you drop for? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's... It's a weird situation because, yeah. like, like you said, I, I, Kerwin's not had – he's not got off to the greatest start on the right wing. Yuri has. Right. And – but we know what Kerwin brings to the, to the game. We also don't know how long it's going to take him to get his visa. And the left-right dynamic. Exactly. We don't know how long it's going to take him to get the visa. Uh, well, so once again, I'll pump the brakes on this because my understanding – is that it's going to be very quick. I hope so. I he, hope so. He may, by the time you're watching this, he may already be in the U.S. Uh, to take and pass his physical for the club. Yeah. And uh, the state between uh, the state of relations between Israel and the United States is a, a favored status. Yeah. And right now, uh, for Israelis coming into the U.S., I believe there is an expedited, expedited visa process. Yeah. So waiting three to four weeks for what, Diani? Diani visa. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, he may be with the team before Diani is. Yeah, which is which, wild. I mean, that's 
We've talked about it before. If That's you're LAFC, it's right boom, bop, da, boom. Yeah. If it's LA Galaxy, it's boom, bop, da, boom. I mean, and then. <laughs> if you're Charlotte FC. You're just out of luck. <laughs> wait, wait three to four business weeks. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yeah, so. Uh, I'm, but I'm excited. Um, I think it's I think it's a, a big deal, obviously. Dean had stated that he but wanted a winger. I, well, to, to answer your question, who would I replace? Um, I think we rotate. Yeah. I, I think that you have to ease him in. He may not be match fit to start off with. He yeah. may not be able to give a full 90. We don't know. When he joins the team in training, we're in the middle of a road trip. Yeah. Like, if he joins the team in Nashville, I don't want to see him on the pitch. No, yeah. Give him some time to get to know the players, you don't have to. to get warmed yeah. up, to get acclimated to the United States. Like, yeah. what a culture shock yeah, that's gonna be for massive. any player coming from overseas. <laughs> well, and this just ties into what we're talking about, but Danny Brams of the Charlotte Soccer Show, Daniel Bramlett, a.k.a. Shout out. Yeah, and uh, he, has, he comes in with a listener question. No injuries between now and then. Uh, Who starts at the left wing when Charlotte left, hosts left Toronto wing. April 13th? So we're talking April 13th. So it's we're recording on March 5th. This is, you know, over a month from now. That gives about a plenty of time to get acclimated sure. to this team. It gives sure. about a plenty of time to get to know Dean's system. And it gives us plenty of time between now and then to see how Kerwin's playing, right. the form that Yuri's in. And so to answer that question, Danny, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into my crystal ball here. Danny Brams, I'm going to say the starting right winger on April 13th is going to be Kerwin Vargas. That's my answer. I think he finds his form. Yeah. I think he gets his groove back, and I think he scores a, a scorpion kick. I, we're we're going to see him doing his backflip before April 13th. Hey, look, and he, he was, my, he was right my, right my preseason pick for player of the year. I'm just saying. I think that Kerwin, listen, Kerwin, we know what Kerwin has in the locker room. We know. We've seen it with our own two eyes. Yep. We know what, what he's got. Um, but, yeah, at the end of the day, a great signing. At the, the timing, being able to get this before summer, get reinforcements in, because we are not just the, the, the caliber of signing, yeah. but how how we are so thin at wing to right. be able to get him in is just massive. Yeah, and if we can shore up with maybe a, a TAM-level signing for a Cam, yeah. um, I, I heard an interesting theory on the Total Soccer Show. Uh, that we may go after Minnesota United's camp because uh, he doesn't necessarily fit their, their new play style. Huh. I haven't uh, heard that. They're yeah. going with an aggressive high press, and he's more of a possession yeah. camp. So could we use a possession camp? Yeah, for sure. I, I think we absolutely could. <laughs> yeah, and look, man. I think we absolutely could. Ben's coming back. <laughs> ben, ben is going to oh. come back. So when Ben comes back, that, added, that, that battle. That's tough. And, you know, that's he, so tough. And it's hard to say because when he when Latanzio – Ben scores a brace, right. and then he doesn't see the field for right. two games. But the first season, we can always go back to that first season when Ben, just yep. fresh out of Maryland, fresh yep. into, fresh out of college, falls out. Yeah. And, and, you know, so he was playing on he was playing right or left mid. He wasn't playing centrally. But he is a central midfielder. Yeah. And so I'm intrigued to see how Dean handles that as well between him and Brock. And he really shined and uh, was able to utilize his skill set when he was not uh, overthinking. He was out yeah. there playing open and free. And what does Dean preach? That pragmatic approach exactly. of letting the players play. And while Bender was uh, in peak Bender form, he was leading MLS in goal creation opportunities. Yeah. Come on, baby. Dino. Yeah. This is like a prototypical Dino this type player. This is his player. guy. This is his guy. I'm just saying. And, and you know, and ah. so, yeah, so we got that. And bring um, back the headband, too. Yeah, Bender. yeah, yeah. We need it. So, so yeah, we got it. We got the new player. Um, but let's talk about, A, the Charlotte Independents. The, Char the Charlotte Independents, they had their fan fest this past weekend. Luke was there with his kids. I've seen the face paint on the kids. <laughs> They were, pitch, they were pitch side. Yeah. How was it? Uh, it was an awesome experience. So, to break it down for those who don't know, Charlotte Independence is uh, celebrating their 10th anniversary. And they are in USL 1, which is the third division of U.S. soccer. It is actually parallel on the third division with Crown Legacy, yep. which is an MLS yep. Next Pro. So... Charlotte Independence play in Uptown Charlotte at American Legion Memorial Stadium. 
which has the best skyline view it, of any phenomenal. sports venue it's phenomenal, yeah. in the metro. It's it's a great stadium. If you haven't been lately in the past few years, they did an extensive renovation project. They actually reduced the seating capacity, and the place looks great. Yeah. Highly recommend it. It is uh, the least expensive soccer professional soccer ticket that I'm aware of <laughs> yeah. in Charlotte. Uh, it's an yeah. easy trip. The, the crowds are a lot lighter, so if you want to bring the family out and have a good time, you can absolutely do that with the Independents. And they were showing it off on Saturday for the final preseason game. Uh, they had pitch side seating for select VIP. Yeah. A.K. season, season ticket holders. Numbers, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, they catered the food and drinks. It was great to get right up on the pitch and see my man Clay Dimmick up close and in person. Hey, Hugh Roberts. Who was on the show. Let's go. On the YouTube channel. Go check it out. Yeah, check out the, the back episode. Not only that, the head coach of who the Independents were playing, Roy Lasseter, yeah. also on the show. Uh, Carolina, Carolina Core. Core FC. Carolina Core FC. Uh, they were in town. The Foxes, up the Foxes, yep. were uh, coming down from High Point. And I, I'm going to be honest, they do look like uh, more of a developmental side. But I think with that young of a club, you're going to see them start to gel and really uh, improve throughout the year. So I'm intrigued that's a, to see them in Crown Legacy. That's, like a great, yeah. that's a great value proposition. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait to go up to High Point and see a game. For sure. Um, yeah. So with the, the Fan Fest, Carolina Court took an early lead on a penalty kick. Uh, Pack, actually, Austin Pack, my man, goalkeeper of the year, USL one, shout out, uh, actually saves the penalty, but they get the second chance opportunity and just knock it through. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. But I'll tell you exactly what how Charlotte and Pence responded. It was with two more goals <laughs> to win the preseason game yeah. up to Jack's baby. Yeah. And they had uh, face painting, balloons, bouncy houses. It was fun for the whole family. The Mech Reserves tailgate with new food sponsored Boar's Head Foods. And my man Kev, a.k.a. Carolina Reaper, slanging the meats slanging out there on the grill. <laughs> we had a good time. we got to get you out to an Independence game, man. Yeah, it's so, going to be great. So, you know, obviously I've never been to an Independence game. I live in, you know, Clemson. Uh, I'm a Triumph supporter. Yeah. Um, I've been a Triumph supporter since they came in the league. At the time, I was living in Greenville, literally five minutes from their, where they used to play at Legacy Field. Uh, they now play at Furman University on Paladin Stadium. In Paladin Stadium. The I-85 Derby. Exactly. And they just, they, for those of listening that are Triumph fans, which I know Gio Canos is listening, who works for the front office of Triumph. Let's go. Um, and they just had their kit release. So the Roddy River Riot, is the, that? The, the Reedy River. Reedy, Riot. Reedy, So yeah. the Reedy River flows through Greenville. And gotcha. um, so, yeah, so they just had their kit release. If you haven't looked at these jerseys, they're the best that the, the Triumph uh, put out. They are they, – they're, they're hot. Honestly, they're, they're really good. They're, they're similar colors to Seattle. This th- this year they have the blue sash coming down. It, it reminded me of, like, uh, Red Stripe. You remember the, yeah, yes. that beer? Yep. The Red Stripe yeah, the sash? So it looks good. Though. They I start their it. season March 20th um, in the Open Cup against oh, okay. uh, SC United Bantams, and that's going to be down in Columbia. Um, okay. And – yeah, um, we, we might have to get out for that one for sure. And friend of the show, friend Sebastian Velasquez, RSL, NYCFC, played over in Israel. Let's go. Um, went to middle school and high school with him. He just he he played for El Paso, um, and just signed with the Triumph and is not uh, come back home. So very excited to see that. Jamie Smith. Jamie Smith. Speaking of Jamie Smith, I watched the game this past Saturday at Tetrad Brewing in Greenville. For the Charlotte FC game, Southbound Jamie, and Crown. Yep, the Southbound and Crown. Jamie Smith was doing some bartending. They had some raffles there to give away a signed Jamie Smith Triumph jersey. Jamie Smith was actually sporting the Explore kit. Um, how? Yeah. So yeah, Jamie Smith was there. The Triumph. How was how was his uh, pint pouring technique? Uh, Did he have it down? You know what? A little you rough. Know, I have no complaints. Okay. It filled my cup. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all that mattered to me. So I had no complaints. Um, the Triumph coaching staff was there. Um, they had some more players there. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, USL is get, about getting ready to get underway. So, this, like we I've said this many times on this podcast, content bleeding out of the eyeballs. Let's we go. are going to be covering the independents. We're going to be covering Carolina Core. We're going to be covering Crown Legacy when they get started. We're obviously, Charlotte FC. And Always. obviously, the independents. So, I'm ecstatic. It's hey man, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a sabbatical and go out to check out the Charlottetown Hops and NPSL too. Yeah. We're, we're gonna hit yeah. you from all different angles. Yeah, man. Charlotte is so a soccer city. The Carolinas is. are a what soccer so region. This baby. is the uh, anniversary of the at the time 
the most attended uh, crowd in MLS history, oh. 74,000 two years ago today. Oh, so, wow. Um, we, you know, was, where I wonder what venue held that many, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that many people. So yeah, man. So Bank of America Stadium, like you baby. Said, Charlotte is a soccer city. I love it. Um, I love it. We're talking USL right now. Luke was fortunate enough to get on with the USL lead today for a press conference. What? Luke. Anything come out of that? Uh, yeah, man. A lot of great information. I was with uh, the president of USL Championship and the president of USL One uh, mm-hmm. leagues. And we had a, a media availability. I got to ask uh, several questions, and um, we're going to try to set up a one-on-one uh, in, in the future here. So keep an eye out on the feed. And, um, you know, part of my goal with highlighting uh, USL and, and some of the lower leagues is to really share with the listeners and the viewers what is it like in the life. Yeah. What, what, is, um, what is the culture in lower league soccer in the U.S.? And they did a really good job of putting it in perspective of they're trying to build a good place for the athletes. They're put, trying to put a really good product on the field. Their priorities are not to have a feeder league, but to have a league where players can grow and thrive. Uh, they don't have to leave. They don't have to go play in Europe. They don't have to try to get a move. Mm-hmm. They can stay with their clubs yep. uh, and, and engage with the local communities. Uh, so they, they approach... Their, their strategy as not um, gaining new markets, but investing in new communities. Yeah. And that sounds like, you know, marketing yeah. lingo, but when you look at what Charlotte Independence has done locally with their development academies, their youth programs, and creating uh, like this fan fest yeah. for families, uh, bringing in a lot of youth clubs with free tickets. Last year, I saw several of those games where it's just you know, classes and and groups of kids coming in to see their first soccer game. It's really growing the sport at the local level. And that's what I love. That's what I appreciate. Um, You know, I got to ask them about their growth strategy. Uh, It looks like, allegedly, there's um, several, if not, quote, unquote, many uh, investors who are specifically looking at USL One for new team uh, purchases and startups. And I'm curious to see how that would look. Uh, apparently the goal is 20 plus clubs by 2026. Yeah. So that's rapid growth. Yeah. And you start looking at uh, the challenges of travel once you get to that level. Mm. So they are considering an east and west uh, division just to alleviate uh, some of those travel concerns. Um, this year there was a new in-season tournament in USL 1, yep. like, like the NBA, how it stopped for the in-season tournament. Yep. It's just within the league. There's 12 teams this year. Um, I asked them if they are trialing it to, to maybe add in some championship or USL 2 clubs in the future. And they said that all options are on the table. It is a trial program, and they're going to be reevaluating it after this season. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. I mean, uh, again. We were, uh, Independence was drawn in the same group with Greenville Triumph. Okay. For that tournament. It, so yeah, that would be very so, interesting. So, you know, I mean, obviously the Triumph was around before Charlotte FC was around. Um, so that was that was the the soccer that me yeah. and my son had to go see. Like not had to go see. That's what we got to go see. Right. Um, we got to see some great soccer out there. We got to see some open cup runs. We got to see them play the battery there in the open cup. Since then, since Charlotte FC has come to town, we got to go to the Triumph Charlotte FC open cup match in Greenville. Um, got to meet some of the players. Got to get some pictures with some of the players. So it's it's nice, nice to see that you know that. That this league is trying to take that next step. I love because, it. Because again, this is yes, Charlotte FC is our team. That, that you know, MLS is the biggest league in this country. Right. But at the same time, like you said, we live two hours away from each other. We support t- just two hours. Yeah. And we support two different teams because there's teams there to and support. On the other side of the state, you have the beautiful Holy City, Charleston, Charleston South Battery, and me and my wife have also been there. You, I mean, in all yeah. seriousness, I don't. It's not a very big stadium, but it's probably the best soccer-specific stadium I've ever been to. It is. Um, Patriots I'll Point you, is amazing. Patriots Point is amazing. That new stadium in Huntsville that I went to last year for the Crown Legacy opening game in Huntsville mm-hmm. was incredible. So yeah. that was like a minor league baseball stadium, except it was specifically for soccer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we also have the uh, 
frauds in North Carolina up in Cary. Uh, <laughs> shout out to them, the, the North North Carolina Fraud Club. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we know where that stems from. We know where it stems from. Hey, look, bad blood, man. Bad blood. It, I mean, it is what it is. And uh, so yeah, man. It, it, we got like I said, we have a ton of stuff coming out on this channel, on this on the YouTube channel, on the podcast feed. Just keep your eyes and ears open because we're going to be covering this thing fully through and through. Uh, Crown Legacy obviously has not yep. started yet, so uh, upcoming. Hey, uh, I don't know if I can. Uh, I don't know if I can say it yet, but we have some interviews set up with Crown Legacy that we'll be bringing you in the near yes. future. And when they get started, we're going to dive into Crown Legacy. Um, you know, I, I'm excited about Crown Legacy. I'm excited about what. We, we've already seen it with Yuri Tavares, yep. with Hemi Diop, Big Pat. and Pat, Brandon Cambridge, uh, um, Yal Andrew Pedro. Privet, Yal Pedro. They, Let's go. This is... Big C coming up, yeah, goalkeeper. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. you know, it's... it's Crown Legacy is massive. Like Isaac Walker, club. Goalie Wars champ. Yeah, yeah, Goalie Let's Wars go. champ. With, uh, first, hard, first hardware we brought back for Charlotte yeah, FC. With, uh, goalie with a friend Wars, of the show, baby. Jeff Sharman. She was yeah. there for all that. So, Let's go. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, you know, before we wrap up here, I mean, do you have any final thoughts? On... I, I did. I, I, pe- I took a peek at the show notes, and we got one more listener question. We do. Michael yeah. Gallimore. Okay. The South Dona Crown, represented for Charlotte FC up in Vancouver this past weekend. He says, he asked the Mid-City guys, Mid-City Soccer Show guys, shout out to Matt and Dave. He asked them, what's your favorite ramen? And, you know, I'm... I'm, I think all of us at one point in our lives, especially if you moved out of the house at 17, 18 years old, which I did as well, <laughs> and went to college or did whatever, yeah. you lived off of ramen at some it's point. It's the easiest way. And you put in some water, you throw it in the microwave. That's as easy as it gets. So me personally. Let, let me ask you, do you like brick ramen or do you like cup ramen? I, I have always gotten the brick ramen because I could get a box for like three bucks and live totally. off of it. Totally. <laughs> so I got... I, I would always get the beef ramen, gotcha. and I would always put some Creole seasoning in it to add a little bit of flavor. Don't get it twisted. I like the chicken. I hate the shrimp. I'm not with the shrimp. You want all the salt, I all want, the sodium. I want sodium. <laughs> I want my veins to be drying just up. Just, just clogging. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. No, Constricting. I, I, do, I do like the beef ramen. I actually, as most of you know, I'm a firefighter, so if I, I have a box at the station right now, oh. and if I have, you know... If something's going on and I just need yeah. to get a quick lunch, a quick dinner, yeah, I'm th- that's what I'm doing. I'm putting Creole on it, putting it in there. Put- now, let me ask you this. Do you do the cup or the, the brick? I, I prefer the cup now. And yeah. uh, I go to, like, Lytle, uh, the, uh, the Swedish Lytle? grocery store yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And they have the giant cup of ramen. Yeah. And that thing is mean, dude. That yeah. is it's aggressive. So what, what's your favorite thing? I, I gotta say, like either beef or spicy beef. It just it gives that savoriness. Is there a spicy beef in the brick? There's, uh, yeah, they actually. I think they have like a dozen flavors in the brick. Oh, but, really? Like, the ones they sell in those big multi packs are just like chicken and beef. And chicken and beef and shrimp. That's shrimp. all I've ever yeah. seen is yeah, chicken, yeah. beef, and shrimp. But they have like a whole they have a whole line of them. Yeah. Uh, but no, what I do is I, I uh, I'm gonna dice up some uh, kielbasa or some kind of a, a spiced uh, sausage. <laughs> Throw it in the air fryer, get it nice and crispy black. And uh, then I'm going to uh, chop up a bunch of onions and peppers. I'm going to saute that shit with a little <laughs> bit of, uh, like, like shred up some kale in there. I'm going to do uh, a little bit of chili oil while I'm sauteing that. And, uh, man, over the top, a little bit of teriyaki sauce. I light it up in an over-easy <laughs> egg. Over-easy yeah. egg on top. Cut it in half. Let the it be egg, all sloppy. I will say the egg. Ooh. I've never done it with the ramen. Ooh. But I have when I like me. So my wife got me a blackstone, like a portable blackstone yeah. for Christmas. And when we do hibachi, the egg for the rice, it just takes it to it's, another level. It, you, it just does. If you're somebody who likes to put cheese on things, you can easily substitute a nice over easy or like wet scrambled egg yeah. for cheese, and it'll give you that protein hardiness. Yeah. yeah. It just it like it feels good, man. But I want a mix of all the textures. I want I want it to pop. I want it to be crispy. I want it to, to give me that noodle slurpiness. I also like a little bit more water in there. I want it to be a little slurpy. You yeah. Know? So so he goes way more in depth with it than I do. Um, don't get me twisted. I like to eat. Uh, I you know. I like but, to cook because I like to. Eat. Exactly. That's... So, 
But yeah, uh, thanks for the question, Michael. Um, yeah. I know. Ask more food questions, yeah, man. I'm down with it. You know, he's already asked the cookout question, which he's asked also. I think Michael has a set question for every week for every podcast. He just asks to get everybody's I, I mean, I don't want to be giving away all my cooking secrets. <laughs> yeah. Right, but Michael's going to ask. Um, uh, hey, just wait until uh, we drop my sombrero man sit yeah. down. We do about 30 minutes where we're just talking about Mexican food, yeah. and, and it's a deep dive. Which will be coming soon. Shout out to Hector, my boy. Yeah, so I will say I this. I'm not going to give anything away. Um, the, you've seen the interviews, obviously, with the Independence, with Carolina Core. You, we've all, we're getting ready, and by the time you see this, you've seen that Will Palachik has already been on the show. You, Willie Pete. You, we've got the Super Fan Series with LaMorta. we got Sombrero Men, as you just alluded to. We also have some more coming in yeah. so so just keep again keep your eyes out and your ears open because we we're, we're trying to keep it to like three episodes a week we don't want to <laughs> overwhelm you with content we know yeah. there's a lot of other Charlotte yes, content yes. out there and great ones yeah and uh, we respect it and I've already seen a few of them stealing my guests after I after I float the ideas <laughs> to them suddenly, suddenly they're booking my guests but no it's there's enough for it to go around man sure. we're for all sure. one community it's all for the crown baby yes it is um Love it. Hey, Cole, any last thoughts? Uh, Charlotte FC Toronto coming up. Right. Um, so, I will say this. Um, obviously, it's at 2 o'clock. I like that. That gives us that gives us the Sunday to watch the game. And depending on how that goes, if we win, if we come out of there looking good, we're going to get to watch some MLS. But, yeah, no, as far as the score prediction and as far as games and all this, I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw. I just think – I don't think Charlotte – We've only seen two goals in two games for Charlotte. Yeah, and we have to. I have to see more before I can say, you know what? They're putting three. The chances have been there. Don't get it twisted. Uh, hey, two goals in two games is better than we started out last hey, year. Hey, one hundred percent. And so, and then, um, so, and then being away, I think, I think it'll be a one-one draw. What do you yeah. think? Um, I'm gonna go two-one Charlotte. Okay. I, I think uh, uh, Bernadeski and uh, Insigne for Toronto are. Um, looking a little bit better than they have in yes. the past. But don't let that New England result fool you. Toronto's still not good. They're still going to win the wooden spoon. <laughs> and we're going to spank them with it in this upcoming game. Dude, I hope so. I'm just saying. I hope so, yeah. And, and Signe has, yeah. has looked really good so far. I got, I got one thing. I got one last thing to, to bring up here. And this is off, off script here. Okay. Uh, I recently saw we're, we're playing Nashville coming up here on uh, 316. Yep. Uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend. SEC right. basketball tournament is going to be in town. It's going to be a crowded weekend in Nashville. Mm-hmm. They are likely going to be without their two strikers, okay. Sam Surridge and Hani Mukhtar. Yep. Uh, we got some, some friends, some close personal acquaintances in the Nashville fan base. And um, between now and then, they're playing in the Champions Cup against a young – South American prospect, I think an up and comer. Uh, his name is Lionel Messi, and <laughs> prospect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I got to get something off my chest. I got something to say. Nashville quadrupled their ticket prices and yeah. did not include this game in their season pass for their season ticket holders who have been with the club since it started. Yeah. The crock block. The boys who are holding it down in the six one five. Yeah. This shit pisses me off. Yeah. You get an exclusive season ticket holder pre-sale to buy your own seats for a game that should have been included in your ticket package. Yeah. And the cost for this one game is a quarter to a third of what you're paying for your entire season ticket yeah, package. Crazy, dude. It it's is crazy. bullshit. It's crazy. That is that is that is in bad faith. Yeah. That is a dick move by Nashville. Uh, I hope we lay it on them, man. I, I hope we really put them in their place. Well, not just and, that, but next week I'm talking some, talking some stuff about us, specifically stealing the guitar. Now, the, you know, and... Now, I want to beat our, our friends. <laughs> I, I want to, you know, it's a healthy, friendly sibling rivalry. <laughs> yeah. But I also feel bad that, that their ownership is uh, disrespecting them. And, yes. and I know, I know the ownership is going to say, well, it's the Champions Cup. We're not responsible for the prices. Yeah, you are. Include it in the season ticket package. Look, here's my thing, bro. Nashville just played a, a, a Champions Cup game right. at home. Right. They had 2,500. They had 2,500 people in that stadium. Insane. So, but he, but here's the problem, and I agree with everything that you're saying. Don't get it twisted. But here's the issue: when Messi comes to town, weeknight game. When the weeknight game, Messi comes to town, it's good. There's gonna be asses in the seats. 
<laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Charge the uh, newcomers. Yeah. Charge the looky not, loos. Not, not your, yeah, not Don't your, treat your season ticket holders I agree. Like that. I agree a thousand percent. So, I agree. hey, shout out to Nashville, man. You know, Charlotte's out of a competition. Yeah. I've, I'm on record. You know, I'll go on loan to Nashville as a fan. <laughs> uh, Atlanta can give fuck. But, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, Nashville... No, no, no. Nashville, uh, we, we like you guys. We're sister cities. Yeah. We got a lot of the same look, stuff. Look, going man, on. and they and copied they copied us with uh, with the guitar thing. Is what I heard, right? That's the word we, on the we street. We had it first with Green Day. Yeah, and then they said they they got to do it. Yeah, with guitar you know, you know, know, something like that. Yeah, and there is Champions <laughs> Cup tonight, um, which I will be partaking in. Um, you got, I mean, look, there's if I don't know who listens to this show, you know, if you listen, if you watch the Champions Cup, I highly recommend it. This is this continent's... Why does it matter? Because this is this continent's premier competition for soccer. What, what's uh, the reward? You get an entry into the Club World Cup. Exactly, which is going to be in the USA. We're so, hosting. So you want to play Barcelona. You want to play the PSG. You want to play Barcelona. Man City. Exactly. This is your opportunity. you got to win do. Champions Cup. Exactly. And so I encourage and, everyone. I mean, Liga MX has had a monopoly on it. Yeah, and yeah. As MLS supporters, you know, we you want should, to see MLS succeed. You, yeah, and, you know, and so you got, you still have, but out of the round of 16, seven of the eight MLS um, representatives are all Eastern Conference. Yeah. There's one Western Conference representative in the round of 16, the CONCACAF Champions Cup. So right. just keep your eyes on that. If you don't watch it, give it a watch, man. It, it's, 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 it's our on premiership. FS1, FS2. It, it's not FS1, unfortunately. It's always FS2 or it's on, it's free on Tubi. Yeah. But now, it's, yeah. it's I, and I think that's ridiculous that yeah. uh, the, 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 we, the we our champions. Invest, will, we need to invest more in this competition. It's, and it's, 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 it's this region wide. It's not just one team or this. It's Dominican Republic, exactly, Puerto Rico, exactly, Costa and, Rica. Yep, yep. And so, you know, I, I, I love the I love the competition. I've been watching it for years. Um, I I can't wait to see Charlotte in it. And when they get in it, and they're playing on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night at Bank of America Stadium, is God willing, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> I, hey, I've I've watched a few Champions Cup games. I'm not in as deep as you. Yeah. Who do you got winning the thing? Who's your, what's your prediction? <laughs> uh, wow. I'll be honest with you. Um, T Grace is looking down. T Grace looks down. They play Orlando City tonight. Um, Orlando City looks down. Orlando City not looking too good right now. But I will say this. This is just me. Any competition that Lionel Messi's in, it's hard to pick against him. Yeah, he's, he's got um, so much hardware. Um, it's hard to pick against anything that Messi is in. Definitely, specifically, a knockout competition yeah. um, where he can focus he's got, on he's it. He's got another gear. It, so and and they just spanked Orlando five nil um, with Messi and Suarez and, in the brace. They're, they're going to dog walk Nashville. You know, it, it looks that way without their strikers. It looks that way. So. Yeah, I'm, I, if I had to pick, if I was going to my head right now, I'd pick I'd pick Inter Miami, um, just because I'm not picking against Luis Suarez and, and Lionel yeah. Messi. I'm not going to. Um, yeah. Unless they're playing at the Bank of America Stadium, then I'm picking against them. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say uh, America Club America. Club America. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, that's always a great shout. They, I, they won it a thousand times. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm just going going with the odds. Yeah, here. and um, but yeah, and, and you know, I wouldn't put. I would not sleep on Columbus. Oh, I would not well, sleep on Columbus. You know, Columbus is projected to finish first place in MLS. Yeah. Now, do they win MLS Cup? I don't know. You go into the playoffs and any, it's any, if, if, whoever's Le- in form. You know, Le- yeah, yeah. Lionel Messi is going to yeah. do what he does. So, yeah, if, I had, if, I, if I had to choose, it would be Messi right now. Um, but, yeah, so. Supporter Shield, though. Columbus. Yeah. So, Got to be. So, uh, yeah, Columbus. Um, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Cincinnati's yeah. up there again. Yeah, hell was real. The best, the out of this round of 16, though, the best uh, tie that we're going to see is between Monterey and Cincinnati. Brandon Vasquez yeah. playing against his old team. Yeah. I'm excited to see that. That's a storyline. Yes, you I'm don't, excited you to see that. You can't see that anywhere else. Yep, I'm excited to well, see that. This at least third, yeah, well, which we <laughs> well will, actually. We will, we'll probably see. So, I'm excited to see that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, man. Um, Last thing I got, another big prediction. Uh, Syracuse 84, Clemson 76, go orange. There it is. I'm, 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 I'm Switzerland on this one. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, everyone knows my thoughts on this, on, on Clemson. This, everyone. this is extra time. I think the podcast is already over. Yeah, we're, we're just, just chilling now. We're just point. talking. So, yeah, um, I, 
I hope Syracuse wins. Don't get it twisted. Hey, we're, um, we're shooting for March Madness. Yeah. And, so they, they By the time this airs, they'll already know the results. They will know, but, yeah. Because I know they're ACC basketball fans. <laughs> yeah, they shout are. Out, they're... Shout out Jorge Torres. Let's go. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know we're out here. And uh, real Matt Barbie, too. Yeah. But not I your mean, team. You're, Char- you're a Charlotte. You're an ACC basketball <laughs> fan. You just are. All um, right, guys. we got to get out of here. Yep. i got to finish this beer. Uh, this is QCS cool. Pod. Yeah. We're here. We're in the flesh. Um, follow us on Twitter at QCS Pod. Instagram at QCS Pod underscore. YouTube at QCS Pod. On Twitter. LVL, UP underscore Luke. And on Twitter with me, Cole underscore Godfrey. And we appreciate you guys so much for tuning in. Continue to, like I said, content's going to be flying your way. And, yeah, rate, subscribe, share with your friends. We really appreciate it. And good night, Canada.